This video is sponsored by The Ridge. So you make bread with mostly regular wheat flour, but are there alternatives? Yes, there are many. And today I'll showcase one of the most delicious ones. Hi, I'm Sune and I'm a food geek. So the flower I'll be showcasing today is semolina flower. Semolina flower is a coarse, golden-hued flour made from durum wheat, renowned for its high protein and gluten content. It's widely used in making pasta, giving it a firm texture and a delightful, slightly nutty flavor, as well as in various breads where it contributes to a crunchy crust and a rich, earthy flavor. So what are the differences between bread flour and semolina flour? While they share some similarities, as they're both derived from wheat, they possess distinct differences in terms of their composition, texture, and culinary uses. The primary difference between bread flour and dorm flour lies in the type of wheat used to produce them. In the US, bread flour is made from hard wheat, typically hard red spring or hard red winter wheat, while in Europe it's usually made from soft wheat. This flour is high in gluten, making it ideal for yeast leaven products like breads, rolls and pizza dough with a desirable chewy and elastic texture. The gluten structure in bread flour traps air produced by the yeast during fermentation, creating a light and airy structure in baked goods. On the other hand, semolina flour is made from durum wheat, a hard wheat variety with a high protein content, but a different gluten quality than the wheat used in bread flour. Durum wheat is the hardest of all wheats and is characterized by a high protein and gluten content. However, the gluten in durum flour is not as strong or elastic as bread flours. This characteristic makes durum flour less suitable for bread making, but ideal for pasta. The gluten structure of durum flour gives pasta its firmness and helps it maintain its shape during the cooking. The milling process also contributes to the differences between these two flours. Bread flour is milled to a fine consistency, contributing to its ability to produce well-risen baked goods with a fine crumb. Dorm flour is often milled to a coarser texture known as semolina, which is used in pasta making. When finely ground, dorm flour is used in some bread recipes, particularly in Mediterranean and Middle Eastern cuisines, where a denser and hardier texture is preferred. Are you unsure what to gift for the holidays? What about a rich wallet? They're out now in these three gorgeous powder-coated ceramics. Look at those colors. I'm kind of partial to the baby blue. Rich Wallet expands to hold up to 12 cards plus room for cash, while remaining as slim as possible. Shop the holiday sales at rich.com foodgeek and get up to 30% off through December 20th. That's rich.com slash foodgeek. Using my link, you can enter your email or SMS for a free chance to win a rich bundle worth $4,000. Thanks to The Rich for sponsoring this video. So what kind of bread can we make from finely ground semolina? Well, today I'll show you how to make my version of a pane pugliese. A pane pugliese is a traditional Italian bread originating from the Puglia region, characterized by its rustic, crunchy crust, and soft interior. This bread is typically made using a high hydration dough with mainly bread flour, with the inclusion of semolina flour known for imparting a distinct flavor and slightly yellowish color of the bread. I will go off script today by making the bread with only finely ground semolina flour and keeping the hydration in check to make it a more sturdy bread that's easier to make and easier to use for sandwiches. Feel free to crank up the hydration. It's made with commercial yeast, but using a biga, which is a pre-ferment, kind of like a sourdough starter. It will ferment the flour, which will enhance the taste. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You can also buy some merch, use the super thanks, or use the links for tools and ingredients in the description. Those were the words. This is the recipe. There's a link in the description to the recipe on my website. The night before you want to bake, make the biga. To a bowl add 100 grams or a half plus an eighth cup of finely milled semolina flour. One gram or a quarter teaspoon of instant yeast. Mix it together. 
Then add 100 grams or a third cup plus 4 teaspoons of water. Mix until all of the flour has been hydrated. Scrape down the sides. Leave it room temperature until the next day. Into the bega add 5 grams or 1.5 teaspoons of instant yeast. 10 grams or 1.5 teaspoons of table salt. 300 grams or 1 and a quarter cup of water. Mix until it's homogenous. Then add 500 grams or 3 cups of finely milled semolina flour. Mix until it comes together. Then move the dough to the counter and knead it until you have a nice supple dough. Add the dough to a proving container. Let it prove on the counter until it's grown to about double. It takes about an hour. Then add some water to your counter. Take the dough out of the container. Pull it into a rectangle. Fold the bottom up halfway. Fold both sides in a third and fold the top down and tug it into the sides. Then roll it up tightly. Cover the seams on the ends. Flip the dough into a long proving basket. Stitch the back to create tension on the top of the dough. Let it rise for one to one and a half hours until it's very poofy. Heat the oven to 230 degrees Celsius, 450 degrees Fahrenheit with a Dutch oven inside for about 30 minutes. Then grab your dough, dust the bottom with rice flour, Flip it onto a peel. Dust some semolina flour on top for a cool look. Score the bread. And then take the lid off the Dutch oven. Grab the peel and place the bread inside the Dutch oven. And put the lid back on. Bake for 20 minutes. Take the lid off. And brown the bread for 25 minutes. Take the bread out and let it cool on a wire rack. All right, let's have a look at the crumb. Wow, isn't that nice for a sandwich? Let's have a look at just how gorgeous this bread looks.
<laughs> look at the color of that crumb. Doesn't it just look super delicious? This bread differs from regular wheat by having a sweeter and nuttier taste. The crumb is super soft and the crust is crunchy, but not crack a tooth crunchy. It does really well as a sandwich bread or as a side for hearty meaty dishes. While it may not become your only flour, it should absolutely be a part of your baker's repertoire. I'm sure your kids would be all over this bread. Would you like to see a sourdough version of this bread? Let me know in the comments. If you made it this far in the video, start your comment with semolina and we'll get to your question or comment first. I hope you learned something today. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.